Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at the galaxy known as NGC 1052. The galaxy by itself doesn't really look anything special, as a matter of fact, it kind of isn't. But it happens to have something very close to it that may actually create a lot of controversy in the next few months. So first of all, um, this is not really what we're looking for here. We're looking at its neighbors, its two satellites known as NGC 1052 DF2 and DF4. DF actually stands for Dragonfly, which is the name of a telescope that was able to find these really, really rare and really hard to see galaxies. You're actually looking at it right now, and you're about to see what we're looking at here. These are ultra diffuse galaxies. They're basically, um, well, they're actually the size of Milky Way in a sense, but because they have so, low, so, so, so few stars in them, um, they're super hard to see. There it is. It's sort of now visible. This is actually the more well studied DF2, and it has a companion or a neighbor known as DF4. And the telescope that discovered them looks like this, and it's called Dragonfly because it has these dragonfly like um, formations. It basically looks like a dragonfly's eyes. So the Dragonfly telescope was able to discover these ultra diffuse galaxies and define them as a kind of a new entity that we didn't really know existed before. But what's unusual about these two galaxies, DF2 and DF4, is that they seem to lack dark matter. Now, there was a lot of sort of controversy at first. And because of this, there's actually a lot of follow-up studies uh, about these particular galaxies. And for the most part, all of the recent studies seem to confirm that DF2 and DF4 don't really seem to have any dark matter in them, including the very recent study that essentially analyzed them in a lot of detail. Here's actually how this region of space looks like with the um, NGC 1052 being right here, but you don't really see the dragonfly galaxies because they're so diffuse and so difficult to see here. Okay, so why is it a controversy and what exactly does this mean? Because, you know, like, so what's the big deal? There's no dark matter. Well, here's the thing. Here's actually a video I made uh, a few months ago with the Anton from the past talking about one of these so-called fringe theories known as quantized inertia. There's actually a few of these theories about dark matter that essentially try to explain dark matter in some other way. In other words, that dark matter doesn't really exist, but it's some other effect that we didn't understand. The quantized inertia, okay, this me behind me kind of distracts me a little bit. I'm going to turn myself off here for a second. All right, this is a little bit better. So uh, the quantized inertia and also the so-called modified Newtonian dynamics or MOND for short, are the leading fringe theories in trying to explain uh, the universe without dark matter. And for the most part, I guess they do a good job, but um, most scientists today don't agree with these ideas. They, as a matter of fact, kind of deny them as, well, in a sense, pseudoscience. And the problem here is that if we actually confirm that neither of these two galaxies have any dark matter in them at all, it seems that this may suggest that all of these fringe theories were completely wrong. Because if these galaxies don't have dark matter, it means that other galaxies have dark matter. And it means that the fringe theories were completely incorrect in trying to explain the universe without dark matter. Now, in a sense, it really is a very strange way of explaining that dark matter is real, but the fact that dark matter doesn't exist here means that it exists in other galaxies, including the Milky Way. Oh, and those of you who are not in sure what I'm talking about, so let's say that this is a typical galaxy. If I were to essentially accelerate time here, you would see that most stars would still stay in the same orbit, even though they're moving way, way faster than they should. And this is exactly what we're observing in a lot of galaxies. The uh, fringe theories like MOND or uh, quantized inertia explain this by modifying physics a little bit and um, sort of fitting the results with what we see. But um, normally, so let's just say we remove dark matter from here by actually clicking this button right here that literally just removes only dark matter and then watching what happens afterwards. So the galaxies that we've discovered, the NGC 1052, uh, DF2 and DF4, 
don't seem to have any dark matter because the velocity of stars that we've measured so far using various very large and very easy to see globular clusters seem to be surviving just fine without dark matter, meaning that the stars there move a lot slower, thus kind of contradicting the results from both MOND and the quantized inertia um, ideas. And so here, as you can see, because I removed dark matter, basically almost instantly, this galaxy is going to start slowly falling apart. The stars on the fringes here move too fast, so they start flying apart, and the entire galaxy sort of slowly uh, becomes smaller and smaller. So dark matter does keep things together. And in case you were wondering how exactly they were able to measure things so accurately, well, what the scientists behind their most recent paper looked at were the velocities of these very unique and very specific globular clusters inside of this galaxy, where they were able to see their speeds very, very accurately. And by measuring their speeds, they were able to see that those uh, globular clusters were moving much slower than they should have been moving if there was any dark matter inside the galaxy. And because they were moving so slow, they literally kind of contradicted a lot of those fringe theories. And also, at the same time, showed that this galaxy, despite its size, um, basically contained only regular visible matter, uh, essentially just stars. And although, uh, I guess it's sort of good news for the dark matter researchers because they might be able to find something one day, we actually have not discovered anything in the last few decades. Some of the most advanced uh, detection has actually been happening right here in South Korea where I live and they've found nothing. There's basically zero discoveries. We can't seem to locate any dark matter, we cannot seem to explain it, and if the fringe theories are wrong, we're kind of back to zero. We have gotten nowhere. We are totally unable to explain why is it that some galaxies have stars that are moving really fast and are still able to stay in the same orbit, while other galaxies, like the ones we've just uh, seen, seem to have stars that are moving slow and are totally okay with it. In other words, um, we're kind of back to where we were just a few decades ago. But then again, that's kind of how science works. In the next few months, I can tell you right now, there's going to be at least a few more dozen papers about this particular region of space, because this is definitely one of the most controversial galaxies that we've discovered in the last few years, and because of its rarity, we're definitely looking for more. So far, we only found two, and they're both lacking dark matter, but we need to find more to confirm this, because maybe, and this is still kind of a possibility, Maybe just maybe it's just a mistake, either mathematical or simply based on uh, the actual visual observation. But hopefully in the next few years, we'll finally be able to answer the question of what's really causing these effects. Because if uh, the quantized inertia is correct, then this actually opens up a whole new world for us of creating these incredible devices that could actually even provide infinite energy. On the other hand, if the modified Newtonian uh, dynamic physics is correct, then we have to move in a completely different direction. But if one day we're finally able to find at least one particle of dark matter using either the um, cosine 100 device that's right here in South Korea or some other thing, this will finally actually put the rest to all of this. It it's been a really crazy scientific research it's actually kind of unbelievable how much it cost us so far. Some of these uh, devices were actually some of the most expensive tools we've ever produced, but um, we are still not satisfied with the results because we can't seem to find anything. For example, the cosine 100 experiment that you see right here is a collaboration between Yale and a few other universities, including South Korean universities, and this is basically a super expensive affair. And as of today, as of 2019, and when I'm making this video, nothing, there's nothing. We haven't found anything. And because of these two galaxies here, um, we need to keep looking. So on that note, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, it's definitely not the most exciting discovery. It's actually more of a disappointment because um, I would actually love to ha finally put a rest to this. With us being unable to find the explanation for this dark matter effect that we're seeing, and with us basically kind of just like arguing and fighting about it, we're not really getting anywhere scientifically. But what's really important here is that once we have the answer, 
it will open up doors, scientific doors that is, to an incredible amount of new creation, new research, and some incredible tools that will hopefully one day take us outside of the solar system to new planets, new stars, and will turn us into an interstellar species. And this is exactly why we're spending so much money on this research. It's not just because we're curious, it's because of the possibility of creating something absolutely mind-blowing. So if one day we're actually able to find the solution to this problem, we'll probably get to visit this galaxy and then we can actually maybe even settle one of the planets here. But until then, we're gonna keep looking. We're gonna keep spending that money on this really crazy research and keep looking for the answers of this unusual effect known as dark matter. On that note, until something else comes out, I'm going to stop this here. Thank you for watching. Check out some of the other videos on dark matter I made previously, including the video on quantized inertia and also another explanation from another scientist that talks uh, or explains this in a slightly different manner. But until then, that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who you think may enjoy watching space videos, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.